You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode is a live recording of one of Dr. Taylor Crick's live quick shops hosted at Align Family Chiropractic. This quick shop was all about supplements, which ties up our supplement series. Okay, so we will go ahead and get started. So as you guys know, I'm mic'd up because we're going to be recording this and it's going to go on our podcast channel so you can always get the information from tonight's workshop and go back and listen to it. Has anybody gone back and listened to any of the past workshops? Listen to the gut health or anybody listen to the toxicity workshop? Who was at the toxicity workshop? The last one we had. So a handful of people were here. A um, couple more hands. Um, yeah, so you can go back and listen to it. I encourage you guys to, to check it out. A lot of our patients have said that it's awesome to, uh, you know, to listen to on a road trip or something, and they're just hearing things repeatedly. And a lot of times, the first time you hear things, it doesn't necessarily sink in, but when you hear it over and over again, then it starts to, to sink in. But tonight, we're going to be talking about supplements. And the reason that this is an important topic, raise your hand if you take something. Something, yeah, so every, every single person. So that's why this is an important topic. You know, it's a really, really common thing today that almost everybody is taking a supplement. And when they've studied, you know, they've looked at the population and done surveys, they find that it's about 50%, a little bit over 50% of our population is taking a supplement. But in a lot of demographics, you know, in the demographic that we have here in Salt Lake, um, it's more like 65 to 75%. It's an overwhelming majority of people are taking something. So that's why it's important because how many of you have ever been caught in this situation before where you might know what you think you need, but then you get to the store and, you know, this section right here might just be the B vitamins, you know, and there's a million different brands, there's a million different B vitamins, there's a million different prices, so, you know, what do you want to look for and what do you want to watch out for? That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Some of the most common mistakes that people make, but then also probably the most important thing we're going to talk about tonight are the top five supplements that nearly every single person should be on. So instead of you know, giving you more to be on, we're going to actually narrow it down to where there's not you know, near as many that you need to be on, but there's really five core ones that the majority of people should be taking. Um, but that's what we're going to get into and help you navigate these aisles a little bit better. Um, and, and also, you know, the number one thing is what a lot of our patients have said is that you know, we're not telling them to take more supplements. Hey, take this for that, take that for this. That's really a medical way of thinking. You take this for that, you take that for this. That's really you're treating symptoms, you're treating things from the outside. And what we're doing is trying to provide our bodies with anything that it might not have, anything that we're deficient in or anything that might be blocked, and give your body the right building blocks because you have the power inside you already to be healthy and to be well. So all we're trying to do is really support that power and support your body's ability to naturally be healthy. So it's not a, it's not a we're not going to tell you, hey, you need to go out and buy 12, 15 different supplements, even though a lot of times people will come into our office and that's what they'll be taking, you know, a dozen or more supplements or sub, um, natural things that's anti-medication but still has side effects and still has concerns with it. That's what I want to talk about. So when you look at the numbers, everyone's doing it, okay? So and we've had a, a lot of people um, in here that pitch, you know, their MLM supplement companies or different things and they say, man, oh man, it's crazy how when you're out there talking to people, everybody's taking something. Everybody's doing a different company or everyone's doing a different brand. And like we talked about with the stats, it's over 50% of the population, but it's 65 to 75% in most demographics. Um, within that, you know, they've studied people that do take supplements and they asked them, how many do you take on an average? So they took the people, people that do and people that don't, and then they took the people that do take them and they asked them, how many do you take? And the average was six to 10. Six to 10 uh, supplements on a regular basis. And the most common ones were things like fish oil, things like vitamin D, some of the ones that are going to be in our top five, things like calcium, things like CoQ10. And the thing is, is if you look at the list of the top 10 most commonly taken supplements, they're all pretty good, okay? And most of the things we're going to talk about are pretty good, but you just have to be careful about where they're sourced from and, and a lot of them just taking some that you might not really need. So it might be a really good thing, it might be a good supplement, but it might not necessarily be exactly what you need. And it's a $30 billion a year industry, right? And here in Utah, that's really obvious. So at least maybe it's just to me because we get a lot of people that come in and, and talk about their supplement lines and things, but there's a lot of different supplement companies here in Utah. You know, back home where I'm from in Illinois, is not like this. 
you know, if you had one supplement company, that it might be shocking. I, I don't know if there is a single one there, if there's a single MLM that's, you know, kind of taken over. Where here, you know, you've got your choice. And a lot of them are really good, but a lot of them are also really bad. And if you look at just some of the, some of the choices, how many of you have heard this before uh, with a supplement, that there might be a new business opportunity? Has anybody ever heard that? That you can, you can make a lot of money while helping people get healthy and well. So, you know, their hearts are in the right place, but um, some of the things that we're going to look at aren't that good. Like here's a couple big ones. Isogenics, uh, big, big MLM supplement company, Advocare, Herbalife, all three of those, not so good. Uh, this one, I don't even know what this one is. Green 7.2, that was the first, my first experience with MLMs in Utah was the 7.2 greens, but it's big business, and that's why people are doing it. That's why companies are rushing to get in on the supplement market because it's big business. There's a lot of money. We're spending it, so people want us to spend it on, on their products. So anytime that that happens, you got to be careful because people are going to start cutting corners. The quality is going to start going down. And, you know, you look at a supplement from our shelves compared to a supplement at, at, on Walmart shelves, and they're not the same. and They're not even close. So we're going to explain the difference and explain, you know, some of the quality things when it comes to the maximized living supplements, too. But one of these Herbalife, I just want to put these up there to kind of poke fun at, at Herbalife a little bit. So uh, this first poster says, so you're telling me you went to an Herbalife sales meeting and now you're a nutritionist, a dietitian, and a fat loss expert. Uh, so that's pretty common that somebody will go to a weekend seminar. And, you know, the truth is, is that a lot of these companies, they really are changing people's lives. You know, you see a pre and post of somebody that's lost 100 pounds and has reversed disease and has gotten off medications. They're no lying about that. Whether it's a good product or it's a bad product, you can't lie about life change, about life transformation. So they're still doing a great thing, but a lot of the products aren't very high quality. The other one says, oh, you eat a nutritional shake every day from Herbalife. You must be so fit and healthy. So if you guys have seen these posters before, they're obviously just kind of poking fun at Herbalife, and not to pick on them in particular, but when you do look at Herbalife products, they contain a lot of the things that we always talk about that we want to avoid. Genetically modified soy, corn, canola, and cotton seeds, so the top GMO foods all in there in their oils. Artificial sweeteners like sucralose contain MSG, contain highly processed trans and hydrogenated fats, artificial flavors, and preservatives. So in different products during their line, they're really picking out everything that we talk about that you want to avoid, and they're putting, these, putting them in their health foods. So that's, you want to be really careful even when you're looking at natural foods, when you're looking at health foods, when you're looking at supplements, you still want to be very, very careful because they are going to market that to be you know, a small company. We're the opposite of big pharma. We're just this little mom and pop supplement company making granola bars out of our kitchen or something like that. When in reality, it's a $30 billion a year business. So you got to watch out for that so you don't fall into a marketing and advertising trap there. So if we're taking so many supplements, if everybody's doing it, you know, are they working or how well are they working? And you know, we always talk about the stats with American health. And so we know that even though we keep taking more and more supplements, our health continues to decline and decline and decline. And we always talk about, you know, the ones that have been around for a long time, heart disease and cancer and how they're through the roof and still are. But how about the other ones? How about the, the 2000 and uh, the diseases that have come on since the 2000s? More asthma, more allergies, more autoimmune conditions, more ADHD. We're always talking about the new 21st century diseases, and we rarely ever get past the A's because there's so many of them just in the A's that have skyrocketed. But when you look at our overall health, it keeps going down and down and down. But if we keep taking all these supplements, then shouldn't we be getting healthier and healthier and healthier? Well, yeah, we should in theory. But here's what we keep, what we, why health continues to go down is because what we're really lacking in, we're not lacking in calcium or in vitamin, or actually vitamin D, we are vitamin C. You know, we're not lacking in, uh, you know, we have some lack of, of some digestive enzymes, some vitamins, some minerals. I would say that we're lacking, but we're not. The, the shortage of our health isn't coming from not taking the, enough supplements and not taking enough vitamins. Does that make sense? That's not the problem. If that was the problem, then we could go around and give people vitamins and supplements and they would get better, and it's just not happening. What we're suffering from is a lack of the five 
essentials. So a lack of essential number one, that's your mindset. That's too much stress. That's too much depression. That's addiction. That's anxiety. That's all these things that are destroying our mind. That's really what we're suffering from. We're suffering from a lack of essential number two with our spines that are degenerating. We've been in car accidents. We sit at desk jobs. We lay in bad positions in our bed. All these things, actually all the other four essentials, essential one, three, four, and five, all contribute back to the spine continuing to degenerate. So we're suffering from that. We're suffering from the lack of essential number three, a lack of good quality nutrients. And we're suffering from the standard American diet that we always talk about that you know people are eating junk food even when they think they're eating well. They're eating toxins, they're eating additives, they're eating GMOs, they're eating all these things that are actually decreasing their health rather than increase it. We're suffering from the lack of essential number four, a sedentary lifestyle, not enough exercise, not enough movement and a lack of essential number five. So that's minimizing your toxins. So when you're not working on essential number five, those toxins are accumulating. So that's really the biggest thing. And although we're focusing on supplements tonight, this has to be the first thing. You have to realize that there's no purpose of taking supplements unless you're working on these things first. So why are people taking them? Well, here are the top reasons. Uh, the first one, to feel better. 72% of people said they take supplements because they want to feel better. That one makes sense. 67%, uh, the next one, to help prevent from getting sick. So also, you know, good reasons. We're taking them for good reasons. The next one, to help get better while sick. So to heal quicker or to get over, to recover from a sickness, from an illness, from a cough, from a cold. Uh, next one, to live longer. That's a great one. The next one, to build strength and muscle. So that's more like your proteins, your creatines, a lot of bodybuilding products out there. Uh, the next one, for a specific health reason. So maybe you have a specific you know, gut health issue or a specific hormone imbalance or a specific, um, you know, just a specific symptom that you're taking a supplement for. That's the next one, 36%. 24% said for sports nutrition, and then 12% said for weight management, which I was surprised at. I thought weight management would be a bigger one because there's a lot of weight loss products that are out on our shelves today. Um, but that's why people are taking them, or that's, that's what they're expecting out of the supplement, or that's what they're expecting as a result or a return. But who should be taking them? People that are living the five essentials. So that is the biggest thing that I want to encourage you to, to think about today is you shouldn't even be thinking about taking supplements unless you're doing those five things, unless you're actively taking care of your mindset, unless you're actively taking care of your spine and your nerve supply, unless you're actively watching your nutrition, being careful about what you put in your body, actively exercising and actively avoiding toxins. If you're not doing all five of those, I'm not saying that you have to be perfect, by any means. There are people that are better than me in each of those five areas, but you have to be looking at those five areas first before you reach for a supplement. And oftentimes that's the problem is that people think that you know even though we're, we're opting away from medication, we're still living in this quick fix mentality where all I have to do is take this. Guess what? It's a lot easier for me to take a pill than it was for me to wake up at 4.45 this morning and go to the gym because that sucked. Um, and it does every single time but it's a lot easier to take a pill, but it's, it's a lot more effective to actually put the work in and do those five essentials. Um, then it's important to do your supplementation. And I do think that supplementation has, a, has an important role in our health. You know, there's some controversy about whether or not supplements are even beneficial or not. Uh, I do think that supplementation plays a, a, a really important role with your health. But like I said, it doesn't, it's, it supplements. It doesn't take the place of anything else. It's only to be used after you're doing these five essentials actively. So why do we take them? You know, we already looked at those reasons to feel better, to live longer, all those things, but what makes us believe that a supplement's going to make us live longer? Well, do you guys recognize who this guy is in the in top and bottom? Who's that? Dr. Oz. Does Dr. Oz tell us which supplements we should take? Yeah, if we listen to in, in Dr. Oz has, has great information. It's really good information a lot of times. But if you took everything that Dr. Oz recommended, you'd be, you know, your closet would be full of overflowing with, with supplements and you'd be 
overwhelmed. You'd be taking too much on a daily basis and you'd probably die from supplement toxicity. But no, Dr. Oz helps us decipher these things, but every day we hear one thing is good for this and another thing is good for that. And then we see it at the store three weeks later and we think, okay, I need to buy that, I need to buy this. And a lot of us, we wind up with, you know, you look in your supplement cabinet and you got 10 or 12 different supplements and you might not take them regularly, but you know, mine was the same way. Uh, and I was kind of surprised. I was uh, here on a Sunday a couple weeks ago working and, and recording a podcast on supplements. And then I went home, and for some reason, my wife had our like old supplement stuff pulled out. And I was like, what is some of this stuff? Just going through bottle after bottle, checking expiration dates. And you know they just accumulate, do they not? And I'll tell you, one of the things like uh, for my mom is when she started getting on the maximized living supplements and doing some of the metabolic testing that we do, she actually, we didn't add to her supplement plate, we actually started taking away from it. But the reason that those accumulate, the reason that we start buying things that we may or may not really need, the marketing. I mean, look at this, Flintstones, that looks awesome, right? And whether you're a kid or not, for me, that looks awesome. These look awesome, that's candy right there. If that's candy that also has vitamins in it, Heck yeah. And so people think that they're cheating the system. Like, oh my gosh, I'm eating this candy, but it's really vitamins. I'm doing a great thing for myself. But no, the reality is you're just eating candy, pretty much. Uh, there's no, nothing good that you're getting from these vitamins. And I'll show you some of the ingredient lists later. But here's a good one that's a live one. I was looking at that one. That one, the label on it makes me want to take it, right? And it says women's energy. And I don't need that. But it's just like uh, the word alive and the vibrant colors and the packaging and the labeling make it so tempting that I don't see how anybody would not want that um, if they saw that on the shelves at the store or something. So that's one of the things you got to be careful for is just watch out for labeling, watch out for marketing. Um, it's there for a reason and it works. Um, that's why it's there. So two big problems that we're going to go over before we get into the, the top five supplements that everybody should be taking or everybody should at least be, be considering. Uh, two big problems. Number one, the first problem is not taking what you think that you're taking. Okay, so what that means is qual quality control and what's on the labels. So some of you guys may have seen the, uh, we had on our whiteboard last week that they just did a, a study, a DNA study. It was done by the, uh, the Attorney General of, of Texas, I believe. Um, but he did a DNA, he, he spearheaded this DNA study of different supplements. And they tested supplements from Walmart, Walgreens, GNC, and Target. Okay, so four of the biggest retailers in the country, and they went and they tested these supplements, and they did DNA tests, and they found on average 21% matched what was advertised on the label. So like these are three of them that they tested. So ginkgo biloba, it, and it's just supposed to be straight up nothing else but ginkgo biloba, they didn't find it in there. They found it only 21% of the time they found it in there. The worst one was Walmart, 4% matched. 4% of the DNA matched what was on the label. So that's the first big problem is maybe you're, th you know, this one's called saw palmetto, really good for prostate health. So maybe you have a prostate condition and you read about saw palmetto and you're going out to take it, you want to avoid getting on a medication, you want to avoid having a surgery, your head's in the right place, your heart's in the right place, but you're not even taking saw palmetto. Right? You're taking something else. What you're actually taking, who knows what it is, but it doesn't even have saw palmetto in there. Another one was garlic. Uh, they tested six different supplements that were, that were herbs. And yeah, 21% overall, 4% from Walmart. Horrible, horrible results. So that's the first problem, is not taking what you think you're taking. Quality control for the vitamin and supplement industries is loose at best. Uh, it's very, very... There's very, very loose restrictions as far as what goes on the label. And you know, even with a reputable supplement company, they have to be tested at the time when they're bottled, but the second that they're bottled, they're losing potency. They're losing potency at all times. So you have to be very careful that you are not taking what, or that you are taking what you think you're taking. Uh, another thing is, you know, many sources are questionable and low quality. So here are, you know, some of the five worst toxins hidden in vitamins. So you think that you're taking one thing, 
but in reality, maybe you're taking hexane extracted soy and rice proteins. So the biggest thing is these are damaged proteins which are inflammatory. Hexane extracted, that's just how they extract them. It's a more dangerous process, more dangerous way to extract the proteins. Uh, there's high levels of aluminum in some of our detox products. So what are a lot of detox products, what are they supposed to do with heavy metals? They're supposed to get rid of them, right? But they contain them in there. I'll show you one in a second that I had in my kitchen that has had heavy metals in it. Uh, lead and arsenic in herbs from China. That's actually what was in uh, the one that I'm going to talk about is arsenic. That's in a lot of your, your supplements. And when they do these uh, testing, these quality tests, these independent third-party quality tests, they'll find that these are in a lot of even the most reputable brands. Uh, number four, inorganic minerals. So these are minerals that your body doesn't know how to use. An example that we're going to talk about later is calcium. We're going to talk a lot about calcium today. But there's many different forms of calcium. But you can get calcium from rocks, and it's still called calcium, calcium carbonate. Or you can get calcium from plants. That's more like calcium citrate. And we all know that we are what we eat. So you're either moving towards you know, a healthy living vegetable or you're moving towards being a rock, right? So you're getting it from two different sources, and a lot of them are inorganic. Your body doesn't know how to use them, and you just, you just pee them out. So if you've ever even heard of somebody having like neon green pee after taking too many vitamins, that's because there's inorganic vitamins in there that the body doesn't know what to do with them, and it has to flush them out. And what they look like is they look like neon green in your urine. Uh, the last one, acrylamide, so those are cancer-causing chemicals. So a lot of things, there's a, another study that tested for gluten in a lot of supplements. They were all labeled gluten-free, and guess what they found in a lot of them? Gluten. So the labeling is just really, really, uh, you can't rely on the labeling. What you have to look for, and what we're going to talk about, is you have to get a reputable source. And that's one of the reasons why... I feel so confident, you know, supporting the, our maximized living supplements is because they're very, very, very particular about the sourcing and about the quality. The other thing that I'll say about the maximized living supplements is that, you know, we're we're a group of doctors. Uh, there's a thousand of us worldwide. We all do a blood and urine testing on ourselves. We've all done vitamin D testing on ourselves. We've all done metabolic testing on ourselves and see pre and post changes with these supplements. If a supplement's working, it should be able to be measured. And I could say that with confidence with all the maximized living supplements that pre and post changes can be measured pretty easily with those supplements. Um, and the crazy thing is, is the industry surveys suggest that about 85% of Americans are really confident with the safety, quality, and effectiveness of these products. And you know what? Three weeks ago, if you would have asked me, I would have been a lot more confident than I am now. I know that some supplements are junk. You know, that some of the ones at Costco, some of the ones at, at Walmart, some of the ones that are the biggest brands, um, I, I knew were, were kind of junk. But I didn't know with a lot of the ones like uh, this one is... This is called Green Vibrance. This is a greens powder. So I was reading about this last week, and they're saying they tested these different greens powders, all these reputable greens powders, but they tested them, and I think six out of ten of them tested really high for heavy metals. They said one in particular was off the charts for arsenic. And, of course, it's this one, which I had in my freezer. I was ticked. So this is a really good one, I thought. You know, it's greens. It's 12 strains of probiotics. So many of you have heard us talk about probiotics. We're going to talk about that as one of the top five supplements. 25 billion CFUs from 12 strains. So just a really, really good greens powder. So whenever I'm out of the maximized living greens, this is what I was using. And I had to go home and I had to toss it. So you really can't be too safe. And like it says there, the list of laced and tainted supplements is growing faster and faster. So you really want to be careful that you're not taking something that, that you're not trying to take. And when you are trying to take something that might be good for you, you want to make sure that you're actually getting that. If the label says vitamin A, you want to be taking vitamin A. You don't want to be taking vitamin A plus GMOs, plus heavy metals, plus preservatives, plus this, plus that. Um, and also just not even being able to absorb the source of the vitamin in the first place. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, not taking what you really need. Okay, so this goes into you know, taking a lot of things where we, where we wind up taking, you know, having 10 or 12 different things. And this is how it happens. This might sound familiar to, to you guys. Dr. Oz said that turmeric was good for inflammation. And you've always heard that calcium was good for bone strength. And, you've, and garlic is good for immunity. 
and you read that glutathione was good for detoxing and that CoQ10 is good for the heart and that black cohosh was good for hot flashes and you heard that glucosamine chondroitin was good for knee pain and quercetin was good for allergies and vitamin A is good for the eyes and someone said B12 was good for energy and you read that probiotics are good for gut health and melatonin was good for sleep and green coffee bean extract is good for weight loss and vitamin D prevents cancer and vitamin C prevents colds and so on and so forth. And the crazy thing about that is you're right. Every single one of those. Every single one of those is accurate, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you need it. Just because vitamin A is good for the eyes and you have poor eyesight doesn't necessarily mean that you're deficient in vitamin A. Same thing with any of those things. Just because you heard that it's good for allergies and you happen to have allergies, it's worth a try, but you don't know for sure unless you've been tested. So that's the second problem is knowing knowing exactly what you're what you really need. So with that, you know, I want to do a special focus on calcium because calcium is one of the most common supplements. Would you guys agree with that? Or one of the ones that we've heard the most about? What's it good for? Everybody shout out, what's it good for? Bones, right? And almost everybody knows that. Or if we went out and we did a poll, you know, on the streets, an overwhelming majority of people would know that, right? But have you ever thought about who told you that? Or is it, is it true? You know, who told you that? Or, you know, the milk industry? The milk mustache, maybe? Uh, but who told you that calcium was good for your bones? Because that's not what the literature suggests. That's not what the research su suggests. So in 2012, they did an analysis of all the data uh, on calcium, and they found that a high intake of calcium beyond the recommended dietary allowance, which typically comes from taking a supplement, it provided no benefit for hip or lumbar bone mineral density. So that's why people take it for osteoporosis, for osteopenia, to prevent bones getting weaker. And you know we could talk for a long time about osteoporosis and some of the other causes. It's a, an acidic problem in your body. When your body's too acidic, it actually leaches calcium out of the bones and causes your bones to get weaker. But yeah, when they looked at it, it provides no benefit for hip or lumbar bone mineral density. Another study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that calcium supplements don't reduce fracture rates in older women and may even increase the rates. So now you're starting to think, you know, is this calcium product even helping me? And you may be thinking, well, it, it, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but oh well, it's, at least it's not harming me. It's just calcium, right? But then you start to look at, uh, here's a large study, 24,000 men and women found that those who use calcium supplements had a 139% greater risk of heart attack during the 11-year study. This is from the British Medical Journal, one of the most prestigious medical journals. Another one from the BMJ also, uh, 12,000 people, so you know, not small studies, uh, saying like bigger than my, my hometown. Uh, calcium supplementation increases the risk of heart attack by 31%, stroke by 20%, and death from all causes by 9%. Another one from the Journal of the American Medical Association, another one with 12,000 men, intakes over 1,000 milligrams, so that's a supplemental dose, uh, per day were associated with a 20% increase in risk of death from cardiovascular disease, the number one killer in our country. Uh, so here's a few more. The Office of Dietary Supplements at the National Institutes of Health looked at the risks associated with calcium supplementation. It's linked to an increased prostate cancer risk, increase in kidney stones, 40% higher risk of death among women with high calcium intakes, 157% higher risk of death if those women were taking a 500 milligram calcium supplement daily compared to women with moderate daily intakes. And then lastly, a consumer lab analysis, that's the same company that did the analysis of the greens powders, found that mine was toxic. Um, they found that when they tested calcium supplements, a lot of them failed quality testing, including lead contamination and mislabeled contents. So the overwhelming majority of people, I'd say, are doing something that they think not only, A, is it not harming them, but that it's actually helping them. When in, the, in reality, it's actually doing the opposite of both of those. It's actually not helping and harming at the same time. So that's why tonight's workshop is so important um, to know what you're putting in your body, what you're taking, what effect it's having, and not just basing that off Dr. Oz or basing it off traditional science or traditional uh, knowledge that you've heard in years past, but actually looking at the, the current research and the current literature of what these supplements are doing. 
What do you guys think about calcium? Is that a little bit eye opener? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, sometimes vitamin D, but I don't know if that's what you're thinking of. Calcium and vitamin D work synergistically, but there is uh, a couple others that are synergistic with calcium that that help it absorb. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so what, which... that's a good question. So she asked about Fosamax, which is a, a medication for bone mineral density. And unfortunately, uh, you know, we're talking good, better, best. Calcium is better than, than Fosamax, I'd say. But what happens is you can, you can change your bone mineral density strictly through your diet. Uh, so by alkalizing your body. So your body gets acidic from eating all the things that we say not to eat. You know, the sugars, the grains, um, the additives, the preservatives, all turn your body acidic, whereas all the things that we say to eat, the green leafy vegetables, the whole foods, turn your body alkaline. So that's the opposite of acidic. And when your body's acidic, calcium is a really good buffer for acidity. That's why a lot of us have to take a Tums or something uh, right after we eat an acidic meal. And it's, a, you know, it's good for heartburn. That's purely, that's purely chalky calcium that buffers the acidity. So your body will leach calcium out of the bones to buffer the acidity. So that's the number one thing to start with is turning your body alkaline through your diet. So one of the things that you can do that with is like a greens powder. Um, juicing, and just adding in more, more fresh whole foods into your diet are going to start shifting you over from an acidic environment into an alkaline environment. Um, but we can talk about that a little bit further. But yeah, Fosamax is one that I would uh, do anything that you can to avoid it. And so I'm not saying go home and throw it out tonight, but start looking at your diet to find out how can I be more uh, alkaline so that in a few months, my bone mineral density can go up and I can get off this medication. That's the way that you want to look at it, the mindset that you want to have. But so that second problem, not taking what you really need. Vitamin and supplement choices are influenced more by media, more by Dr. Oz, more by advertising than they are by science and by testing. And so you can get tested. You can get tested for a lot of different vitamin deficiencies. You can get vitamin D testing. You can get an omega fatty acid index to find out your omega-3s and your omega-6s. And you can do our maximized metabolics customized supplementation testing. And so what that, what that does is that actually tests and shows you where you need supplements or where you have a need for this. So this is an example or a picture here. So this tests over 50 different biomarkers to determine broken metabolic pathways. And the goal is really to indicate a need for supplementation. And it tests eight different areas. Inflammation, vitamin deficiencies, toxicity, GI. So we looked at that at the toxicity workshop. You know, I showed you an example of my mom's testing here. Uh, toxicity, GI stress, stress hormone imbalance, uh, blood sugar imbalance, oxidative stress, and fatty acid metabolism. Those are the eight different categories it tests. And this is an example of some of the results. So here's one, two that were high in oxidative stress. So this one indicates a need for antioxidants. So it's telling us where there are broken pathways in the body, but really the goal is to show you exactly what supplements you really need. And so I talked about, you know, that my mom, when she, I have a picture, I think, of her, uh, that's her, her prescription. Uh, and when she, when she first did this, she had like 10 or 12, maybe more than that, different supplements that she had just picked up along the way that she had just accumulated. She was taking a lot of these. She took a vitamin D. She took an omega. But the rest of them, she didn't. Uh, she took a lot of the, the regular, the maintenance supplements. But yeah, we narrowed down. We nixed 10 or 12 medications, or not medications, supplements, told her she didn't have to take those anymore. So it actually made her life a little bit easier to narrow it down into what she really needed. Uh, but yeah, that's what the, the results look like. This one says, indicates a strong need for supplementation with CoQ10, increased dosing based on the number of biomarkers present. So CoQ10, that's one of the top five most common supplements taken today, but how many people really know that they need it or they're just guessing or they just read the outside of the label, oh, it's good for my joints. Well, my joints hurt. Oh, it's good for my heart. Well, 
I want a healthy heart. I might as well take it. But you're really just, it's, it's called machine gun fighting. You know, you're blindfolded and you're shooting with a machine gun, hoping that you hit something. Whereas with a customized supplementation, you're really sniping. You're getting a target. You're zooming in on that target. Then you're squeezing the trigger to make sure that you know that you're, that you're hitting that target. After the testing, then this is what it does is it spits out your recommendations. So here are some recommendations. Like the top one was a B complex. That was for different vitamin deficiencies and also for oxidative stress that this person uh, whose test results this are, um, that it showed them. The next one down that they recommended was CoQ10 for their vitamin deficiencies, for their oxidative stress, for their toxicity. The next one down was Max Fit for vitamin deficiencies. So it spits out exactly which supplements they would recommend in which order. Now it spits out like 12 of them. We don't recommend that everybody go and take all 12 of them, but the first three or four might be very, very important for you um, if, you're, if the tests are showing that you're deficient or that you have a blockage in one of these areas. Here's a couple other uh, of the sample, or examples of, of the different uh, Supplements, adrenal calm, there's also an adrenal energy, so whether you're, there's, it's called wired and tired, or I forget what the other one is, but wired and, wire, or maybe it's wired or tired, adrenal calm or adrenal energy. Uh, this is a pro-magnesium formula, so a lot of people have been shown to be deficient in magnesium. CoQ10, like we talked about, B-complex. I will tell you that based on the, the lab testing that we've done, these two are by far the most commonly needed, CoQ10 and B-complex, by far. But they're not ones that I have on my, on my top five because I don't think that they're, they're supplements that everybody should be on. But as we've done testing, they're by far the most commonly needed ones. But yeah, then there's my mom's prescription. So that's what, you know, what she was taking. And I'll tell you too, my mom has been a maximized living patient for, for several years now, probably for three years now, had, has had awesome results. But she was starting to get headaches. Like around Christmas, she started to get a lot of headaches. And she hadn't had them for like three years. But she said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, if these headaches continue, I'm going to have to go see a doctor. I'm going to have to start taking, taking something. She hasn't taken anything in a number of years. And she didn't want to. She wanted to avoid that at all costs. Well, we said, let's find out what's going on. That's what stimulated us doing the testing. And she just let me know last week. She said, I haven't had a headache in two weeks. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital or something, but I think it's the detox. She thinks it's the detox. I think it's probably everything combined, but that's what she thought it was. So a lot of times if you've come to a plateau in your health or you've come to a point where you can't break through the next level, uh, the testing might be for you. The last thing that I want to talk about about the testing is that we have one kit on the shelves right now. It is $500, uh, and some people will say you know, that's expensive. We used to charge more when we first started, but it's kind of like when the new iPhone comes out, it gets a little bit less expensive as, as you get more familiar with it. But it's $500 as the retail. We have one test on the shelf, so if there's anybody that wants to do it tonight, we're gonna do it for 20% off, $100 off. Um, so that's, there's only one of those available. We're only gonna do that once. That's as low as we can possibly go with it. Um, but just FYI, if anybody wants to take advantage of that, you take the tests right now, you do the tests at home, you send them in, and the results get sent back, get sent back to us. But here are my top five supplements. So these are the most important supplements for everybody to be on, especially the top three. Vitamin D3, a fish oil and omega complex, a probiotic. There's no controversy with those. Most medical doctors today will recommend that you be on all three of those. You know, my girls, when we had our girls, we had to go to the pediatrician once just so we could get out of the hospital. That's, our, that's my limit, once. Uh, but she said, do you, have them on a, do you have them on a vitamin D3? I said, yeah. Do you have them on an EPA and DHA? That's official. I said, yeah. She said, do you have them on a probiotic? And I said, yeah. I said, who are you? You're speaking my language. She, said, she, was, she was asking about our practice. She was like, do you get the babies adjusted? You know, even the medical doctors are starting to come around to this. That There's no controversy that everybody should be on these first three. Multivitamin, there's a lot of controversy around the multivitamin because I'm going to show you there's really good ones and there's really bad ones. And then greens powder, you can make the mistake that I made and get one that's laced with ar arsenic. So be careful there. Uh, but the first one, vitamin D3. So this is made naturally by your skin when it hits the sun. 
This is actually not a vitamin, though. It's actually a neuroregulatory hormone. It actually regulates between 2,000 and 3,000 different genes in your body. It regulates those. So it's incredibly important for almost every single function. One of the biggest ones is immune function, cancer prevention, huge, huge, huge for that. You know, we've heard about vitamin D for rickets or for bone health, but really, you know, if you look at these levels down here, you're treating cancer and heart disease with vitamin D supplementation. It's a really, really important part to treating a lot of our chronic diseases today. MS is a big one. Uh, there's several others that have been linked to deficiency. And so you can get this tested by your doctor and he may tell you, he or she may tell you that you're low and you need to supplement with vitamin D. But make sure that you're supplementing with vitamin D3. That's also called 25-hydroxy vitamin D or cholecalciferol. Um, 25-OH was what, it, what you'll see in front of it. But a lot of doctors will prescribe vitamin D2. And vitamin D2 has actually been shown to cause cancer, whereas vitamin D3 has actually been shown to prevent cancer. So you want to be very, very careful about the difference there. But here are the levels. Anything below 50 is deficient. Now, you may be thinking if you've had a test before, you might be thinking, well, I was at 39 and they told me I was fine. They told me I was towards the upper end of, of the levels that they're looking at. That's the, the levels that they're testing you know, through the medical system. That's to make sure that you don't have rickets, to make sure that you don't have you know, some of the lower end diseases. I'm going to show you a chart here in a second with where those levels are at. Optimal um, in my world, in the natural healthcare world, is above 50, 50 to 70. Below 50 is considered deficient. But as, you know, like I said, in the doctor world, you might be at 35 or 40, and they say you're perfectly fine. But to treat cancer or heart disease, you want to be up more like 70 to 100. Anything over 100 is excessive. It's really, really hard to get over 100. I can tell you right now that none of you guys are over 100 unless you're just like drinking vitamin D, which I, nobody is, at least you haven't told me. Um, but you could be taking, you know, some people, some, some uh, pediatricians sell 50,000 IU caplets. So 5,000 is what ours are, 5,000 IUs, 10 times that dosage in one pill form. So you can take a pretty high dosage of vitamin D, kickstarts your body's immune system, but it's really, really hard to go over that excessive level. Uh, here's a couple things that vitamin D has been shown to, to help with, and this is you know, through research. So 260 publications showing its relation to multiple sclerosis. Over 1,000 publications linking it to immunity and immune health. Here's a big one. Almost, almost 15,000 different studies and publications that have been put out about vitamin D's relationship to bone health. Uh, 800 to blood pressure, almost 2,000 linking it to cardiovascular disease, 1,300 linking it to diabetes type 1 and type 2, colon cancer, 459 publications. So there's a lot of research that's come out really in the last 10 to 15 years about vitamin D. Um, so I'd encourage you, take a vitamin D if you're not taking one. If you don't know where you're at, get tested. But yeah, find out, find out where you're at. Yes, good call. So vitamin D is fat soluble. So you don't want to take it on an empty stomach. You want to take it with something fatty. So like the, the number two supplement that we're about to talk about is like a fish oil. I always take those together. Today at lunch, I took uh, glycine, which is for detox, um, two, two vitamin Ds and an and a omega. And I always take my vitamin D with my omega because then it can be absorbed. Uh, so you, you can take it with a meal too, but you want to take it with some kind of fat because then it can be absorbed because it's fat soluble. But this is a chart. This, this axis going this way are the blood values, the values that we just looked at, the, the below 50, 50 to 70, 70 to 100. So what these are along this other axis are different diseases. So down here is rickets. And what this is showing is if everybody in here, everybody in the population's blood serum levels were between 7 and 20, we'd prevent 50% to 99% of all rickets. So that's why 20 is the lowest level, because when we're all at a level of 20, we're going to prevent 99% of rickets. But then as you start moving this way and looking at these diseases, the next one is heart attacks. If everybody was between, or if everybody was up at 35 nanograms per milliliter, we'd prevent 30% of heart attacks. The next one over, what's this one? Kidney cancer. If we were all at 
48, we'd prevent 49% of kidney cancer cases worldwide. Here's a big one is breast cancer. We could present, prevent 30% to 83% of all cases of breast cancer by having our vitamin D levels up in a certain range. So that's up above 50. So 40 to 60 is prevent the majority of diseases, but most doctors would want you to be more like down in this, or this is the serum reference level, so 25 to 40 is what they'll usually put you at as far as the normal range at the doctor's office. So that's why it's so important. Here's multiple sclerosis, fractures, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, ovarian cancer, all cancers combined, so 77%. Uh, at a level of 38, 39 nanograms per milliliter. So vitamin D, massively, massively important. The next one, oh, here's our vitamin D, just to show you what, what it has. So it's 5,000 IUs. That's typical, typical dosage. A lot of times we'll tell people, you know, maybe not now when it's summer, but if it's winter and you got this, I'd say, hey, start off with the first week taking two a day, taking 10,000 IU. You know, I said I took two today. I take two often, but I don't take it every single day. That's why I take two a lot of times because I'm not as consistent with it. But during the summer right now, you're out in the sun. You don't need to take as much. But I've seen people, they go on vacation in Florida for the winter. They come back and retest their vitamin D levels, and it hasn't changed at all. So the sun is theoretically how you do it, but you, the only way to know for sure is by getting it tested. I think the test on this, I should have known the, what we charge for. I think it's like 125 bucks, maybe. So a little clarification on all those numbers. Yeah. 5,000 is what you're, you're suggesting. Yes. Yeah, 5,000 is what I'm suggesting uh, as a stand, daily, as a standard maintenance dosage for, you know, for 99% of people or 90% of people should be at, at 5,000. Some, some companies will make them in 2,000s. Um, very rarely do you find one where they make it in a higher dosage like a 10,000. So you just you take two if you're up, at, up in that 10,000 range. I don't remember. I think it's like five. We throw me a men's. I think it's like it's it's minimal. It's not a. We got one sitting right there. I mean, I'd be surprised if it is. It's one thousand. So it's not it's not nothing. One thousand, you know. It, but it's a lot of the things that are in here. And we're going to talk about these. They, it, even like the probiotics that are in here. There's ten billion CFUs of probiotics, but that doesn't necessarily take the place of a probiotic. 10 billion CFUs like we're going to talk about in a minute, that's not, in my opinion, that's not a strong enough dosage um, to be a probiotic supplement. So yeah, 10 million CFUs of probiotics, what that does is that aids in the uh, absorption and the assimilation of the, of the uh, supplement. The other thing is this is whole food based. Okay, so all of our supplements are whole food based, meaning they, they pull them from the foods. You know, when they isolate these, these vitamins or hormones or minerals, or they find them from a lab, or they take them from a rock, or they take them from something that's inorganic, uh, then it's not coming from whole foods. And that's not the way that nature presents vitamins and minerals. They present it in a whole food complex. So that's why all of our supplements are whole food based. Number two most important supplement is a fish oil or an omega fatty acid. Or I said this morning that it could be a synonym is krill oil. You know, you could see krill oil, you could see cod liver oil, you could see shark liver oil. All these are the same thing. They're all different varieties of a fish oil or an omega fatty acid supplement. I put that in there because they're not all going to be labeled. Like these all say fish oil, fish oil, fish oil, fish oil. But there's going to be different things that you're going to see on the label. And one of them, for example, is, is ours. Uh, but the reason that this is number two is this is another supplement that helps nearly every, every function in the body. And when they measure people, nearly every single person is deficient in it. So it helps 90% of the things in the body. 90% of us need it. So that's why this is number two. Vitamin D and, and uh, fish oil, number one and number two. And you can look up you know, almost any buddy online, their, their top five, their top 10 supplement recommendations, number one and two aren't going to change. Uh, that's going to be pretty consistent across the board for any healthcare provider, number one and number two. So omega-3s are the ones that we hear the most about. That's your EPA, DHA, and ALA. EPA and DHA are the fish sources. ALA comes from flax seeds, so that's a plant source. One thing is, you know, if you're vegetarian and you're vegan and you're only eating flax, ALA can be converted into these two. But you have, to eat, you have to eat more of it. So you got to eat more flaxseed if you want to get your omega-3 numbers up 
fish oil, the reason that the supplements are so much more popular than a flax oil is because they're more bioavailable. They're gonna bump your, bump your omega-3s up quicker. Uh, but so the reason that this is important, we talk about the omega-3 and the omega-6 ratio all the time. So you hear a lot about omega-3s, you don't hear as much about omega-6s, but both are equally as important. What they find in our Western diet, where we should be at, is about one to one. The highest number that I've ever seen is four to one. So between one to one and four to one, we should be a pretty close ratio. But where they find what our conventionally raised beef is in, and what they find what we're in when they test our bodies, we're more like 20 to 1 is the average. 20 to 1 in inflammatory omega-6s and 1 anti-inflammatory <laughs> omega-3. So that's why it's so common to supplement with omega-3s because we need to raise those up. But it's equally as important to avoid the harmful inflammatory omega-6s there. What omega-3s can help with, the number one thing is inflammation. So that's why they're huge for heart health. Great for heart disease, great for the inflammation that takes place in your arteries. That's the same inflammation that takes place in your joints. That's the same inflammation that takes place in your cells. And we've talked before about how all of our cells are made up. The layer on the outside is made of fats. So by taking a good, healthy fat supplement, we have good, healthy cells that can allow the good stuff in and get the bad stuff out. Really, really important that everybody's taking some form of fish oil. But it's also important to know, you know where, you, where you stand. You know, we have, uh, through our metabolic testing, some people have needed to be on an omega-3 exclusive. Some people need to be on more like the optimal omega, which has omega-3s and omega-6s. So this is the reason I said that, you know, I titled it this, as a omega fatty acid supplement. This isn't just a fish oil, our optimal omega has plant and animal based sources. So it has the EPA, DHA, and ALA. It also has GLA, which, com which is an omega 6, comes from borage oil. So it's an anti inflammatory omega 6. So it's a really full spectrum blend of fatty acids that you're getting uh, from the optimal omega, and they have it in the optimal ratio of fatty acids. They call it six to three. I don't know why it's two to one to me, but uh, six to three ratio. <laughs> it's like, so it, makes it, sound, it makes it sound fancier. Uh, but yeah, it's a two to one ratio is what they provide uh, in the optimal omega. So another, another really, really good one. Next one, probiotics. So this is one of my favorite topics. And this is one too, you know, I'm not trying to just sell you on our supplements. We don't sell a probiotic. So a lot of you, I send you to go to Sprouts to get a, a probiotic because we don't sell one. Uh, like the vitamin D has probiotics in it, the Max GI. Some of our supplements have probiotics in them, but they don't take place of a, of a broad spectrum, high strength probiotic, which I think that every single person should, should be on. So this supports healthy gut flora, which is the bacteria in your gut, necessary for proper digestion, but also for immune function. We talk about how 70% of your immune system lives in your gut. Also necessary for hormone balance. So your thyroid hormones are actually converted by the flora that are in your gut. They convert T4 to T3. And also brain and mood, mood balance. They call your gut your second brain. Uh, like I said, this is one of my favorite topics. If you want to learn more about this, go back to the podcast and listen to our gut health workshop. Uh, so you, a lot of you guys were at the gut health workshop. I don't know when that was, three or four months ago. Uh, but you can go back and you can rehear some of these things about probiotics, about digestive enzymes. But that's definitely something that everybody should be on. What to look for? You want a broad spectrum probiotic um, and over 50 billion CFUs and more than 10 strains. So, and almost all will be refrigerated. So this picture, these pictures, this is the brand that we most often recommend to people. So we have it right here. This is the men's. This is the one that I had. This is 85 billion live culture, so 85 billion CFUs. So over 50 billion CFUs and more than 10 strains. This has 31 different strains. Now when you go to the store, they've got, this is women, women 50 and wiser, men, men 50 and wiser. I have inspected the back. I don't think there's any difference. It's great, great marketing. They're, they're, they're geniuses. They're geniuses. Uh, but then, you know, here's one for, that's specific for colon care. There's specific ones for vaginal care. There's, uh, this is an ultimate care, so 100 billion guaranteed of 34 strains. So a lot of different variety. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of different. I'm guessing that there's a difference between the men's and women's, but I don't think there's any difference between 50 and wiser versus not, not 50. Cost-wise, the exact same. Yeah, the exact same. Um, 
They do have kids ones. Yeah, Garden of Life has some good kids ones. Here's another thing, though. We had a patient in today that uh, mother and daughter, and the daughter, I said, what's up with your legs? She says, eczema. Uh, and we said, you need to work on your gut health. And uh, we said, you need to take a probiotic. And it was a cost thing. She said, well, I, I don't know if I can afford a probiotic. I said, well, you go get this one. This is like 15 bucks, I think. Um, a shot of this, like, uh, literally a shot. Tablespoon, so it's 30 servings. It lasts a month, so it's 50 cents a day. Uh, it has, you know, and you look for over 10 strains. This only has seven, but it's got over 100 billion CFU, so it's really strong. It's really potent. I actually know the the founders of this company, and I've, they've shown me their their lab work where they had this independently tested. And, and 100 billion was actually a, a low estimate. That was one of their lower testings, but that's the only one that they can claim on the label there. But yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. I told. I didn't think about it today when we were talking about it. I said, oh, yeah, you know, I took a couple slugs of that yesterday. Um, it's re Yeah, it is really, really good. So there's a lot of different options. Yeah, you can put it in smoothies. You can do a lot with it. It's, it's, it's just really good. Um, you have it too? Yeah. The blue one, yeah, the tropical or berry. And, yeah, there's tropical, there's berry, and there's something else, which are all pretty much the same. I don't know. I've done a lot of research on that to try to find out because Dr. Mercola is adamant that they shouldn't need to be refrigerated. His do not need to be refrigerated. But every, and I trust Dr. Mercola. Uh, I follow him pretty closely. But everybody else is adamant that they need to be refrigerated. So I don't really know the difference. The, the idea is obviously that it keeps the cultures alive. Yeah, and so it's, it's live food, so that's why it needs to be refrigerated. Same reason why we buy Ezekiel bread in the refrigerated section, because it's live, so it has to be kept alive. Um, but Dr. Mercola says that they should be fine non-refrigerated, so that kind of threw my head for a loop of trying just to... His just his. Okay. Yeah, so like these definitely need to, need to be refrigerated, but yeah, his does not. And like if you're at Real Foods and you're looking at the non-refrigerated probiotic section, there's not much. But his is one that's that's on the shelves, non refrigerated. So, okay, number four, multivitamin. So this is probably the most controversial because a lot of people think, you know, okay, well, I'm only going to get one supplement, or I, I want to cover all my bases. So let me get the one that has 60 different things in it, right? But if you got 60 different things, then that means they came from 60 different sources. That means that they probably got them from the lowest bidder. They got them from bad sources. You're, you're making it more dangerous by going for the supplement that has more things in it. So multivitamin, I'd say, is one to be very, very careful of. Here's the most common brand, Centrum. Here's Centrum Women. Here's Centrum Advanced. Here's Centrum Complete from A to Zinc. But many ingredients are sourced from China and other low-quality suppliers and are ineffective, dangerous, and tainted. And so here's an example of, this is the ingredients of Centra, Centrum. Everything in yellow is toxic. Okay, so a lot of things that, that we talk about all the time. Um, and a lot of them that you guys will recognize. There's polyethylene glycol. We talk about the glycols. Here's uh, FDNC blue number two, aluminum lake. FDNC red number 40, aluminum lake. So different colorings. There's three or four different colorings in there. The very first one, calcium carbonate. Um, that's not toxic, but modified food starch, corn starch, so titanium dioxide. When you're looking at a lot of these, they're just filled with a lot of junk. You know, they might have some good things, and they can they can say, you know, it has calcium, it has vitamin A, it has vitamin B, it has vitamin E, because the, it, it technically it does, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good form of it. So I would be very, very, very careful when it comes to buying a multivitamin. Um, ours is whole food based, so the men's comes from 18 whole fruits and veggies, and it's specific for men, so it has different blends in it to support muscle recovery, prostate health, and heart health. Uh, the women's has specific blends to support breast and hormone health, has a healthy skin and nail blend, and also this is a, the new formula, has a, a, for, a, a support system for healthy stress response. So that's built into the multivitamin, so it's not just you know, your vitamin A, B, C, D, E, um, but it also has some of these more specific blends, and they're whole food based. I take that for prenatal after seeing what the hospital, or the, my medical doctor was offering a bunch of different samples, prenatals, and I just was looking at them and I'm like, these are all toxic. They yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we did a lot. Them out on their, their 
pictures, what they're offering. I'm like, these aren't even, I wouldn't even want to put them. What they say? Money. And they're just like, oh, well, okay, well, what are you taking? And I'm just like, tell them, you know, the supplements that I'm taking. And I'm telling them what's wrong with theirs. I'm like, why would I want to put dye in my vitamins? Like that just make a lot of sense. Yeah, and you know, if it, it, dyes have been proven to lead to hyperactivity in kids. They do the same thing in the fetus. I mean, literally, they do the exact same thing. There's a new drug out there called pre-Ritalin. It's for hyperactive fetuses. That's not, that's not a joke. I can't, I can't make that up. I can't make that up. If, if your baby moves, if your baby moves at all, it's hyperactive. And you need to take this medication called pre-Ritalin. And they think, you know, the company that made it, they think that they're geniuses. How, we figured out how to market to unborn kids. They're probably high fiving and stuff like that. Uh, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. But yeah, that's uh, you know can take the place. We had to do a lot of research. I, I didn't, um, I didn't do it, but we had to do a lot of research to find a, a good prenatal. We didn't get it from Sprouts. We didn't get it from here. We ordered it online, and yeah, a lot of the prenatals aren't as good as you would expect them to be. But yeah, so a multivitamin is number four, but. Because it covers a lot of your bases, but it's also the one that I'd say be the most careful with of all of them. And then number five, a greens powder. Uh, so even though some are tainted with arsenic, they are really, really good. Uh, what they are, there's three sources. There's three, three types of greens that they use for these. Uh, number one is uh, your sea vegetables. So that's like uh, kelp and uh, shout some other. What did you just say, Jenny? Seaweed, yeah, chlorella, things like that. I'm running low on brain space now. But sea vegetables is one. Another one are grasses, wheatgrass, barley grass. Uh, that's where they get these from. And then the third category is uh, green vegetables, you know, your broccoli, your spinach, your kale. And they juice these things, and then they dry the powder. There's two different ways that you can get greens powder. One is to just freeze the, the food itself and chop it up into a greens. The other one is to juice them and then, green, and then uh, turn it into a powder. The juiced one is actually better. It's a little bit more rare, um, but the Maximize Living one is a juice version. This one has 34 different raw, organic, living superfoods in it. So it's really, really good for, like we said, about alkalizing your body. So a lot of people, you know, we had a guy that bought one recently. He said, I'm sick of giving my kids this, I forget what it was, but it was like Nesquik or, you know, some chocolate milk that they love. Like a kid's insure. It was. It was like a vitamin one. It was like a kid's insure, Pediasure or something, you know, but it was chocolate flavored. He said, I'm sick of giving my kids this. I'm going to take this home. And it's naturally sweetened with cacao, so there's no sugars in it, but it is chocolate flavored. And he came back after the weekend and said, my kids absolutely love it. So we tell people all the time, if your kids aren't getting enough uh, greens in, which a lot of people, you know, it's hard to get your kids to eat your greens. It's probably hard to get your husband or your wife to eat their greens. But you can cheat that by, by taking a greens supplement. This chocolate flavored with a scoop of our chocolate protein is literally like Nesquik. It's delicious. It's really really good. Any kid's going to love it. Um, but yeah, this is a number five greens powder. So I just want to just go through those top five. Uh, I'll show you in a couple of the other supplements just so that, that you know. Um, detox system. A lot of you guys have done the detox system and you can feel the results from that. That's a two-part detox. That Part number one clears your, your cells of toxins and part number two takes those toxins from the liver, binds them, and excretes them. Uh, Max Fit is a great one that's good to support weight management and metabolism, in particular by working with cortisol, which is your body's number one stress hormone. So that's the one that increases when we get stressed, and it causes weight gain around the midsection. That's what cortisol does. So this has an herb in it called ashwagandha, which uh, sounds fancier than it is, but ashwagandha is um, an adaptogenic herb, which means that it, it's going to help. It's going to help regulate your hormones. Adaptogens can help like if you're, uh, if you're hypothyroid or you're hyperthyroid it, or you're hypo, um, your adrenals are going too fast or your adrenals are going too slow. Adaptogens can help you in either direction with your hormones. Daily defense, this is an antioxidant. Um, a lot of people have read about turmeric. This has a proprietary blend of uh, curcumin, a, a patented blend of curcumin, which is a turmeric extract. That's what it's for, really good for inflammation, really good for uh, antioxidant formula. Max GI, really good for uh, digestive support, um, has digestive enzymes, has probiotics. And then the proteins, you know, we have plant protein and then also the whey protein, which is from 100% grass-fed cattle. 
Um, no additives, no preservatives. So when you start to look at protein powders, that's another one that's really common. I didn't put it on the top five, but a lot of people take a protein powder. But they'll have artificial sweeteners, they'll have artificial colorings, they'll have artificial preservatives, and you never know it unless you know how to read a label. So you gotta you gotta be careful with where you're getting your products from. So find a good source, like a good brand like Maximize Living, or find a good store like our office for your basic supplements or the Sprouts, Real Foods, Dave's Health and Nutrition. Find a store like that where you're not likely to find the bad stuff and you just minimize your chances of taking something that you don't want to take. We went a little bit over an hour. The goal of a quick shop is to stay under an hour. I went like two or three minutes over, but we are done. So thank you guys for being here. I hope you learned something and have a good rest of your night. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.